We are in Aubrey today, this morning, it is Saturday, and I came out here with the, it's a joint effort, I'm going to put the sun right here. This is a joint effort between the Plano Amish Radio Club and the Richardson Wireless Club, who has a DMR repeater of ours, by the way, to launch a balloon. We're launching a balloon into the air. It's going to have an analog crossband repeater, it's going to have a DMR simplex repeater, it's going to have a LoRa tracker, it's going to have an APRS tracker, and maybe one or two other things on it. So take a look, this should be a fun event. Shut up and sit down. Ham Radio 2.0 where we do reviews, news, and how-tos of things that are new in amateur radio, and this is something new to me, I've never done this before, I've never tracked, recorded and tracked an actual balloon launch. This is going to be fun. Looking forward to it. Thank you to uh, Andrew for uh, inviting me out here, and thank you for the Park Balloon guys for allowing me to record video with this today. All right. So crossband repeater and camera. And that's what I'm doing. Is that handheld going to be okay in the open? Oh, uh, it's getting foam. Oh, okay. Okay. And then this is the DMR crossband repeater. <laughs> crossband or simplex? Or, sorry, simplex. simplex. Simplex repeater. Buried deep in here is a Hytera PD982. You went all out on packing. <laughs> so how many how many different items are going up on it? This is most of it here. Okay. Doug has another box somewhere um, that's got another tracker in it and some data logging. It's got some humidity, temperature sensors, things like that. Is it? Is it are you are you doing whisper also, or is it just no whisper? No just, whisper, just, just APR, APRS. The Pi balloon box has slow scan TV and it's got a, a LoRa based tracker. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is a little new and a little different. Mm -hmm. Very curious to see how that works. How do you track LoRa? Um, see this little antenna on the back of my truck? Yeah. That's hooked up to a Pi hat that's in the truck. Yeah. And, we have uh, both in case we want to head I don't know if you can see this here, but this is just an Adafruit dev board. Okay. And um, I've got it. It says right there, no packets received. So when we boot everything up, it should start giving me position data on that little tiny screen right there. But this is also working as an eye gate. So I've got a Python script that receives those packets. Uh, we'll form it into an APRS packet and then send it out to the APRS network. So you're doing LoRa over VHF or UHF? Uh, yes. LoRa's, LoRa's, oh, it's, it's, it's not FM. It's, okay. LoRa is the modulation. Um, okay. It's, it's like an FM chirp. Um, okay. If you know radar stuff much at all, but it's it's an FM chirp, and um, at the end of the day, it's just moving moving a string. Okay. You know, and I, I run it through a Zlib compression. You know, so hmm. I get a, a little better efficiency, and it's not not as inefficient as just straight ASCII. Well, 60. I said 1272. So. <laughs> and, and, and we'll lose a couple of grams when we take the spool off because oh, that's got the using the whole the antenna. Uh, we're not worried about. I, I didn't think so, but it's, it's okay, yeah. Pounds, we worry about grams. Oh. Now, what, what is this in the orange box here? This is two things. Uh, one, a six-meter simplex repeater. Okay. And the second thing is a tracker that's attached. It has a... It's measuring pressure, temperature, and humidity. Ah. That's the true part of the weather balloon. Yeah. 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 And so it's sending Good. telemetry nice to down, nice to plus it's got an Arduino in there that's writing it all out to an EEPROM, so we got all the data. As everyone knows, this is a cooperative effort between Plano Amateur Radio Club and Riches and Wireless Club and a bunch of dead people and everybody, whoever. Yeah, we're all, everyone's welcome to all these things, of course. Anyone who drives by and looks like there's a crowd, you know, it's always good. So we are launching today a high altitude balloon that'll reach you 90 to 100,000 feet. Its track, as you've seen all the predictions, is basically going to be to the west, landing somewhere near Slidell. Uh, but you will probably notice the wind is at our back now, so as this thing takes off, it's going to head that direction. So we're going to probably walk it there before we launch it. It's going to go that way, circle around, go back up, and go across. Um, we are using hydrogen as a lift gas, which is a little bit dangerous. Uh, we've never had a problem and I don't anticipate we will today, but definitely no smoking or anything like that around the balloon because uh, it would be rather impressive to watch it explode and we don't want that because we don't have any more gas to fill another one. 
Uh, yeah, get your cameras on. Make sure you get that on video, all yeah. right? That won't be so, a problem. We have a number of payloads. I think probably everyone has seen them before. We have uh, a basic tracker that's been flown on a lot of flights, so we know it's rather reliable about its performance. We have, and it has both an APRS tracker and also a 70 centimeter, just like little CW beacon. It's very low power, but it's really good for finding it when you're real close to it. There is what by Andrew is Pi Balloon that has a camera, a, it's got a tracker. Camera what tracker. Else? It's a LoRa tracker. Okay. And it's got an SSTV beacon. Okay. 144.5 megahertz. Okay. Martin 2. <laughs> Martin 2. Martin 2. Get ready for it. Yes. Does everyone have a copy of the Fast Facts? Yes. Everyone? Everyone? Awesome. Because that gives all the details and all the payloads. There was one last minute change. Uh, the tracker in the Richardson Wireless Club payload is now K5 RWK 11. K5 RWK 11. That was reflected on the latest version, got revised rather late last night, so you yes. might not have that you if you printed out earlier. No. No, no. no. We also have a DMR. Single frequency repeater. Yep. Yep. And we have a. A GoPro. Actually, it's a really fancy GoPro. It's a 360, 360 degree camera and a crossband repeater. All in one. And in the Richardson Wireless Club, we have. Another <laughs> tracker and some weather instrumentation, I believe. Yes. Right? Yeah. Is that correct? No? Yep. temperature and humidity. Okay. Yep. And a six meter parrot repeater. And a six meter parrot repeater. Yep. All right. For all of you that run six meters mobile, you'll be able to okay. <laughs> chat through there. So, what we're going to do next, it's, it's going to be a little boring, but it's important. We're going to start getting all these things turned on and let everyone make sure they can hear them and receive them and they all work before we yep. string them all together and get ready to blow it up. I still anticipate right around. Uh, about 15 minutes at around you know 8:45. that's when we'll blow the balloon up because that happens really pretty quick all the payloads will be integrated by time so basically blow it up hook the payload string to it and let her fly we are going to be doing what's called a tethered launch where we have a uh, basically long rope string kind of holding it down so it gets in the air a bit because this is a long payload string and we let it go and we hope for the best hmm. in about an hour and a half or so We'll go find it on the first try, I hope. First try. <laughs> right next to the road, I'm sure. First try every time. Yeah. But not on the road. Not on the road, but right next to the road. Uh, we have had those like had that. Yeah. On the road. Uh, and we've right had it next to the road, too. Road <laughs> so, yeah. that's it for now. So, we're going to start checking out payloads. And the amount of lift that you put into it has a direct bearing on the flight. If you have too much lift, it goes up really fast and bursts early. If you don't have enough, it can go up and kind of just hang there. We want something in the middle. We want it. They've calculated the math to put enough gas in here to take this to about 90,000 feet. Whoa. And at 90,000 feet, the balloon, as it goes up, it will continue to expand because the atmosphere around it gets less and less. So the, the pressure on the inside causes the balloon to expand, and eventually it bursts. That's what I was wondering. And, and typically, Tony, have you got a cut down on here today? No cut down. So cut down. we're depending on it bursting. It will burst. <laughs> it will burst. Tony, that's that's his eminent forecast. Guaranteed. Okay. <laughs> what's not, a, what's a cut down? A cut down device is a device we put in the payload in between the balloon and the parachute, so that if for some reason the balloon gets to a point where it's just negatively buoyant and it doesn't want to go up and burst and it doesn't want to come down, we can hit a cut down device by sending touch tones up to it and force it to cut the cord in between the balloon and the parachute so that the payload string will release. We do that, in Colorado we do that because if those balloons get buoyant or they get caught up in the winds, that thing can end up going across Kansas. And you know, it's you end up two, 300 miles on a balloon chase, it's not good. Mm -hmm. So the idea is we want to be able to cut it down to force it to come down when we want it to, if it doesn't decide to, to burst. Right. Well, we're going to be lifting ours fast enough that we're not going to have it. Yeah. And so there's the parachute right there. So what happens is you have the balloon, and directly under the balloon is the parachute. So then when the balloon bursts, the parachute then, of course, will be at 90,000 feet. So at 90,000 feet, when it starts to come down, what happens when this thing bursts is you get what's called post-burst chaos, which is it rocks and rolls and goes all over the place in all different directions. Eventually, the weight of the payloads will pull it down. But that chute won't really deploy until it gets down to almost 60,000 feet. 
coming down through 90,000, there's not enough air to pop that open. Yeah. yeah, I was going to say, where is 90,000 feet in the uh, the atmosphere? Because, I mean, like, commercial planes, they're at 30,000. Commercial aircraft are between 25 and 40 yeah. to 45. Yeah. Hmm. So, so we're, we're going way up above that. Way above that. So 90,000, I mean, that's got to be... When you're looking out with a camera, you can see the black of space and the... Uh, the blue green of Earth and below. And, yeah. and you can also see a little bit of the curve of the Earth. Oh, There's, wow. We're going to see Jeff Bezos up there. <laughs> <laughs> well, he went up a lot higher. Than that. <laughs> 90,000 feet is only, what, six, seven miles? Yeah. Eight miles. They went up to 60-some miles, so that's quite a bit different. Uh -huh. Andrew, which one is that? This is GDB 11. This is Pi Balloon. Pi Balloon. It's got the slow scan TV okay. and the lower tracker. Gotcha. Because it is a little windy. So what we'll do is we'll fill the balloon up, and we're going to fill it up where we're basically going to run out of gas almost. That's kind of the plan here. Yep. And uh, so it's going to ascend at roughly 1,200 feet per minute, or about six, six, six and a half meters per second. So Kip will be filling up the balloon. We'll need some people to kind of help just so it doesn't like flop around and hit anything. Yeah. But once we get it all tied off, we'll basically just kind of walk all the payloads over there. Now, the way we do this tether launch, where's the rope? Right here. No. Uh, oh, okay. The yellow oh, yeah. Yeah. Is that whoever holds the ends of the tether, which is this yellow cord, starts off like near the, is kind of a far away from the balloon as you can get. And they both slowly, you know, basically walk together. And when they're together, if everything looks good, one of them just lets go. And the rope just spools right out. And it's off gone. it goes. Okay. I kind of hold it. Yeah, I got a section over here. Ready? Yeah. Let's start getting there going. And then later, what's going to happen is you're going to want to be holding it and trying to make it. It's not here. You're going to be doing this for a while. It'll do the same thing, but don't. Then you'll have to do it for a while. So later, you're going to be doing this for holding it from falling just low this way. Okay. Yeah. 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 much lift. <laughs> <laughs> well, Balloon boy. Okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, I'd be more concerned about anything sparking when he's around. Yeah. Anybody named Sparky around here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can't key that radio. Yeah. Good. All right, you're good. You're out of the way of the tent. Slow, hold on. Hold it, hold it. We, we got a whole bunch of guys with the, with the payloads there. Just take the time to walk here. Okay, we got her. All right. All the payloads that are going up on a big string. <laughs> He's done. All right, they watch your only car. Actually, it's like radio, you can track those. Who has the loose end? He has the loose end over there, I think. Yeah. 
That's the parachute that's underneath it. There goes the camera. That's the camera and the simplex repeater, or crossband analog repeater rather. That's the Laura repeater. I forget what that is. Okay, fourth payload, fourth payload That's the DMR repeater he's got going up right now in the white okay, wrapping. Got it here. Ready? That's Doug's uh, big boy orange box. Okay, let go then. Yep, stop the balloon master. Your your call. No, I don't know. I need to serve this. Yeah, we are caravanning to find the balloon yeah, now. Four of us, Andrew, uh, you, me, Nick, uh, Doug, and then uh, with the gentleman in the uh, blue S250. Uh, Jason, KC5HWB. Roger that, Jason. Welcome to the party. 
Uh, glad I got to catch it this time. I was uh, listening when it was launched from uh, Houston last time on the DMR repeater and very impressed with it. So uh, thanks for doing it up in North Texas this time. This uh, <laughs> It's a fun event. Let me flashback to the movie Twister right now because we're driving along chasing something and we've all got antennas on our vehicles. <laughs> Balloons at 32,000 feet. Oh man, it's only a third of the way up there. They said it would get to 90. That's awesome. KF5 SLK checking in from Parker County. Just passing around 32,000 feet. Okay, I'm just passing around 32,000 feet. Hey, Noel. KC5 HWB on the road in Aubrey headed towards Slide L. Look at the balloon on EPRS and it started going northeast and, and kind of stopped, jumped up about 6,000 feet in altitude and it's, it started heading due south, so I don't know where it's headed to now. KF5, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, the, they're tracking it via EPRS and uh, they say it's about 32,000 feet right now, so it's only about a third of the way up. It's supposed to get up to about 90 and uh, it's headed, uh, I think it's headed, e I think it's headed east or southeast, something like that, but uh, we're, uh, it's, we're driving towards Slide L right now on some back roads out here in the country, but uh, the DMR simplex repeater seems to be working quite well. I, I assume you, you're at your uh, home Q QTH up there. Yeah, copy that. I've got one DMR uh, handheld hooked up to the X30A on the outside, and I uh, just turned on the other one and started receiving you guys via uh, handheld. So, deep. Mm -hmm. Hey, Roger, Roger. All right, well, good deal. All right, well, I'll be monitoring here for a bit. We're going to see uh, how far it goes, I guess. But uh, thanks for jumping in there. KC5HWB. Uh, balloon is up this morning. Uh, Roger, Roger. The balloon launched about uh, I don't know, 20 minutes ago, something like that. Its last report I heard was it it was at 32,000 feet. I'm sure it's higher than that by now. But uh, simplex repeater seems to be working fine. KC5 HWB. 40,000 feet, KU-4C Yeah, good deal. Yeah, we came out to uh, take a, take part in the launch in Anna, and they, they switched to Aubrey on it this morning, but uh, uh -huh. we were able to hit it this morning. W5 WJS. West now. West now. NSR, WA2 TMD. All right, you guys are seeing, uh, you're in Missouri City, Texas, or southwest of Houston. Over. WA2 TOP, K5 NSR, I hear you loud and clear. You only got your close on here. Doing hot WJS. Hey, I thought the initial was slight L. We moved west now. KC5 HWB. We're uh, we're just following the balloon, and currently there's a caravan of us headed westbound on 455 that just crossed uh, 35 Interstate 35 uh, up in. I don't know. I don't know what city we're in. North of Denton. <laughs> KC5 HWB. I hear uh, I hear the station in Missouri City. I hear the station out there in Anna. 
Um, so, doing good, guys. Hey, uh, Jason, do you know if the uh, analog, the, the UHF uh, two meter cross pad is working? It seems to not be working anymore. <laughs> Hey, Steve. Uh, yeah, they were saying a minute ago that it, I, I guess it quit working. It was outputting some kind of tone on the on the two meter side when it first launched, and they don't know why. But it was it seemed to be working for a bit, but they were saying it stopped working just now. Uh, so there's a group of us monitoring 446.5 simplex. Uh, but uh, they said if you want to talk on the repeater, go over to the 6.92 in Denton. Uh, Roger, Roger. Thank you very much, WBHR. KC5 HWB mobile and monitoring. Hmm. Yep, yeah, I repeat, you're still feeling uh, real good here in Anna. Uh, we missed you guys this morning. Thought we was going to get to uh, play around and uh, help watch the balloon go up, but uh, looks like it went up just fine without us. Yeah. 35 WJS. Hey, Willie. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there was quite a few people there this morning. I got most of it on video. And, uh, yeah, they made a venue change yesterday because they didn't want to, they decided they didn't want to fly over the top of Lake Ray Roberts, I think is what it was, because the predicted path was uh, had it going right over the lake. They didn't want to have to go swimming for it should it come down over the lake. <laughs> So uh, that went out on the email, uh, the groups.io list. I think it was kind of late in the day yesterday, though. So sorry you didn't get the message on that. But uh, sounded good out here at mobile this morning. KC5 HWB. Yeah, we uh, I, I looked at the uh, email kind of late yesterday in one of the groups, and it had Anna. And then when we looked this morning, the, uh, the docs actually said Aubrey uh, Middle School or something like that. And I was like, well, darn. <laughs> yeah, Roger, Roger. Well, I guess uh, last minute changes is just kind of uh, you got to go where the weather takes you. Uh, pardon the pun, hi, hi. <laughs> but uh, at least it's not storming today, so there, there is that. KC5 HWB. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I've, I've seen the launches before, and uh, the wind can definitely play havoc on things, especially when uh, if it's a little bit too strong, those balloons are hard to hold on to. But glad we're able to make contact this morning. Uh, uh, not a problem. We'll catch up with you guys next time. Maybe we can uh, make Walter down in Houston uh, come up and join us instead of us always having to wait for him down there. <laughs> Yeah, Roger, Roger. That's a great idea. That last launch they did from Houston, I got to play on the DMR uh, simplex repeater they did, and it was uh, working quite well. So glad to see the same things happening this time. All right, man. Good to hear you. KC5 HWB. KC5 HWB, yes, KF 5 It's okay. Uh, DMR simplex, is it? Am I reaching through here on HC from Spring Town? Hey, Noel. Yeah, you sure are, man. I heard you that time. KC5 HWB, it's it's uh, sounding good. If you want to look and see where I'm at, where the caravan is, I'm uh, beaconing KC5 HWB-9. We're actually about to go by the hunting lease. <laughs> yeah, kind of familiar area up here. Yeah, I was wondering if, he, uh, if, J if uh, Andrew was steering that thing, just land and rust and uh, he surpassed that already. So uh, you can just be careful if uh, I'll jump on the APRS to get here in a minute. KF5 is okay. <clears throat> Yeah, maybe Andrew's plan is to get it to ta get it tangled up in the Roston Tower so he can climb up there and get it. I don't know. <laughs> Be funny if that happened, I guess. But hopefully uh, not that detrimental, though. KC5 HWB. The analog repeater started working again once the balloon started descending and got to a better 
altitude with higher temperatures. Crossbanding from 440 on the receive and 2 meter on the transmit side. The balloon landed in this field and through the sheriff's department we were able to contact the landowner and he was very kind and gracious to let us onto the property and go retrieve the balloon. And in fact, he drove a couple of the guys back who had walked out there to get it after getting permission from him over the phone. He met him out there, drove him back in a Jeep, and we were able to retrieve the payload and everything was intact. A very fun exercise, and I hope to do it again. 73, and thank you for watching.